Welcome back to the Neo Marketing Podcast. On this episode, we'll be talking about the apology impulse. Welcome to the Golden Group Neo Marketing Podcast, a bi weekly discussion of modern business communication. So, welcome back. I'm Pritch Pritchard here with uh, Kyle Golding, and we're going to talk about the apology impulse. Why organizations don't apologize more, and and I'll tell you what that's all about here in a minute. I'm, I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of discussion about this on social media and um, our own marketing circles about what, and when, and how. We always preach authenticity. Yep. So I'm curious to see how this fits into yep. this. Well, it's actually a book that uh, Sean O'Meara and Gary Cooper have written that I glommed onto here recently. I've been studying a pot corporate apologies, organizational apologies, and uh, the title of the book is, the title of this episode, The Apology Impulse, Right. How the Business World Ruins Sorry, <laughs> and Why We Can't Stop Saying It. And, the, and the, the bottom line is that we have this, apparently we have this f- huge fear of mass disapproval, we also have a hypersensitivity to even the smallest criticism. Oh, absolutely. And so, I'm sorry, it's our fault. It's the communicator's fault. Sure. Because we want to say sorry without saying sorry. And the public's buying it. And so, we got to find a different way to do this. So, we're, this catching a, we're creating a catch-22. We are, absolutely. There are a number of different cases in this book. Some of the apologies for some of the slightest things are just, that's how... Business is ruined, sorry, because they're always saying sorry. And I actually, I'm one of those people that when I see an apology for a very minor, something that I, I would never even consider saying you should you should apologize for, it, it actually makes me more irritated than if they had just let it go. Right, exactly. The solution to the problem oh, yeah. is to apologize only when you have to apologize, only when you've done something so egregious. Right. That it requires a no kidding apology. For sure. Right? And then the other part of that equation, six elements. And this book does a great job of explaining that. So here we go. So a good apology, a valid apology, is has six elements. Okay. Regret. Sure. Explanation. Makes sense. Okay. Acknowledgement of responsibility. Certainly. Repentance. Yes. Offer of repair. And request for forgiveness. Interesting. Offer repair and repentance seem very similar. I can't wait to see how they're different. Yeah. And what was the last one again? And the last one was request for forgiveness. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you had a question about repentance and offer of yes. repair. Repentance is, is at the heart of apology. I repent for what I have done. Okay. The offer of repair is... And this is how I'm going to make it right. So would repentance be more internal of fixing something internal or uh, discipline an employee or, or fixing something in their process where where uh, repair is external, the offer to, to make it up to you uh, in, in some instance for someone yeah. who's been slighted? Yeah, I, they're both external. They can both be internal uh-huh. as well. He hamburgered the crap out of it, but Munoz and the United uh, uh, incident yeah. a couple of years ago, right? Repentance. So where, they, where they were dragging people yeah, off planes. Yeah, they dragged a the guy off the airplane, right? Yeah. And he had to, what was it? They forcefully reaccommodated the Re- passenger. Ooh, forceful and reaccommodation? That really, that <laughs> right. seems like an oxymoron. Well, it's communication speak. Right. Right. It's, uh, it's trying to keep, I, I call it spin. I mean, plain and simple. It's trying to take a horrible, tragic situation and make it look good. Now, the four-letter word spin, you brought it up. I try not to bring it up because Pritz... Just his skin crawls when he hears the I word. Do. I leap across uh, the, the table. The, the PR professor in you really wants to always teach out spin, right? We never Absolutely. want to, we never want to advocate spin. But the problem with spin is it goes back to this idea of not accepting responsibility when you are actually responsible. Yeah. Yes. And and wording the apology yes. such that it's a non-apology but in the back in the day right back right. in the good old days right. of three networks 
one newspaper, one radio, radio station in your town, no internet. Right. Spin, the corporate, the giant corporate apology, which was full of spin and overly written by the PR geniuses in a corporation, worked because you had no way to compare and contrast what you were reading in a newspaper or you were hearing the talking head on your local news tell you. Right. That's not the case in 2019, 2020, etc. because we have so many ways of getting information and getting the full story that spin now is not just a four-letter word, right. but absolute corporate suicide. Absolutely. And, and it seems like we as communicators, we don't want to say we're spinning because that's a bad word. Sure. I mean, right? Yeah. But what we're doing when we equivocate in an apology is spin. Right. Just that, and because our audience now have they have technology, they have they have an amount of communication, they have an education level. You can't trick people with spin and big words right. and and using. And in fact, you not only can you not trick them now when they see through your spin, it pisses them off. Oh yeah, big time, absolutely. One of the examples that uh, was in the book was a former prime minister who, after a presentation. And an offhanded comment to a friend, things are still rolling. Oh, yeah, yeah, hot mic. Called the called heckler that had been causing him problems in his speech, called her a bigot. Oh. And, wow, she came up on the net, and all of a sudden, he apologizes. Wow. And he's out of office. He's done. That's his political career is done because it became bigot gate. Ooh. And of course, what they say is anything. Any time you have gate after it, it's a big thing. It's man, a big right? thing, right? A couple years down the road, another prime minister was heckled by somebody um, about immigration, and he called her out on it and and called her a racist and got away with it. That's a rough charge. He got away with it because right. it was on tape and she was being racist. Okay, well, in the first case, it was on tape and. She was being a bigot, and he called her out on it. But then he felt the need to apologize, ah, and that ended his career. He opened that door up, right? Exactly. So don't apologize unless you've got something to really apologize unless for. Unless it's a false claim, right? If, if it was to falsely label someone a racist or bigot or something negative, right. and you couldn't prove that they had, had those kind of actions, then um, you become the bad guy, right? Right. But it was on tape. Everybody heard it. Nobody would have argued with the fact that that woman was being bigoted yeah. in her comments, yet he felt compelled to apologize. Here's a pro tip for everyone. Anytime you're ever in a room where there's ever a microphone, a microphone like this, a microphone on a camera, a microphone, if there's a microphone in the room, always assume it's on recording. People are listening, and that recording can get out in the world. So if yeah. you don't want something caught on a hot mic, right. don't speak in a room with mics. Exactly. So you can never, No matter red light or not, right. don't assume that they're off. The interview ain't over till it's <laughs> That's over. Right. That's right. Till everybody's packed up and they're heading yeah, out. Absolutely. Exactly. You said something about the ubiquitous nature of social media today, right. and I think that has absolutely exacerbated the problem. But if you'll recall, a couple of episodes ago, we talked about how in social media, in response to a perceived slight or whatever, the haters always come out first. Of course. Right? Yes. And we said an hour to, to keep yep. it relevant, but to allow our advocates to jump into the conversation and support us as well. And we need to remember that. Right. Because yeah, that, you that'll be quick, take care. But, you, but don't panic. That, that'll take care of the impulse to apologize. If you see your advocates coming up on the net and defending your position, okay, right? But if you did do something culturally, you know, like Munoz, that was a toxic culture. Right. You, you can't apologize your way out of that one. And really their issue wasn't that that one episode, which was bad, it was egregious, but because it wasn't an isolated incident, it was their corporate culture. They had this attitude towards towards people who fly on their planes, who pay their good money to fly on their planes. That was really the controversy, not the fact that one incident's happened, but that it happened multiple times and that the company sort of had a tough luck if you don't like it attitude, right. which is the overall, I don't want to do business with them. Right, and and that came through. It took United Airlines, Munoz in particular, three times to get the right. apology right, <laughs> right? So the first two are horrible corporate culture apology. Right, and of course, you know, the legal team had their hand Absolutely. in it. Well. Absolutely, and, and, but you know, we tend to try and blame the legal guys. Yeah. No, it's it's us. 
True. By, by the language we use, right. forcefully reaccommodated. Commun- I mean, <laughs> communication is an amazing tool for good and and, and you know and evil. can be misused like right. anything can. Um, and so I think I, I think what I'm reading between the lines here is your point for anyone who's watching the videos, listening to the podcast, who's who's interested in professional communication. Don't go there. Don't like, go there. Be the be the pushback. Be the responsible party that says, "I know you want to you want to play that game. Let's not play that game." Right. Exactly. That's a, that's a good hill to die on, right? It is absolutely. And sometimes you just need to stake a claim to the truth, right? And not be pushed around by the minority noise on social media. I mean, which essentially is what they call now cancel culture, right? On social media where someone does something, someone calls them out, and everyone jumps on them, and they think they're they going to cancel them, right? They're going to they're gonna end their right. career, ruin their business, et cetera, right? Right. Um, some people have been canceled by social media, and a lot of people have weathered that storm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they, they talk a little bit about that. He uses a different term. And now I'm brain dead. I can't remember what it is. But, uh, yeah, we'll be talking more about this. This is a fascinating subject. I've, I've seen the idea of not being quick to apologize and using the word sorry too much and too often is, is negative for your image, whether it's a, a self-brand or, or a corporate brand. Um, and then the, the, the balance is is cancel culture, which right. uh, is really in the news recently because Dave Chappelle, the comedian, brought it up, has traditionally been a very kind of liberal kind of guy and has a new special where he, he kind of makes fun of everybody. <laughs> right. And uh, the, the folks who were expecting him to, to just lean left were really unhappy about getting made fun of too. And he's a comedian. That's what he does for a living. That's right. And uh, and literally addresses, he says, you guys are going to try to cancel me, cancel culture. He brings it up in the stand-up right. where he's making fun of. And he mocks Everybody. Everybody. That's right. Left, right, black, white, in, yeah. old, young, straight, gay, <laughs> everyone. He, and it's an equal opportunity offender, if you will, as yeah. a, in the tradition of Richard Pryor uh, and, and some of the comedy greats, because that's what comedy is supposed to do right. is, you know, kind of shake things up and make the obvious unobvious, et cetera. So um, the, it's interesting that these things are all kind of coming together at the yeah. same time in sort of in our communication and social cultures. Absolutely. Well, I wanted to I wanted to bring this up. I wanted to put the topic right. on the table. Sure. I want to spend a lot more time as we go along in terms of drilling down into it. The authors categorize the types of apologies and I think I think that's kind of fun for mm-hmm. people to hear. Uh, some great examples of of things that well, of the quintessential apology, <laughs> right? And then those that are so I mean, Tony Hayward, I'd like my life back. <laughs> really? <laughs> You know, that, that spill, BP will forever be known by that, those five words, right. I want my life and back. Because it, it, it spoke more to their culture than it did the actual incident that happened. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's, and he there's, was, a, there's a theme running. He was there. an engineer. He wasn't a communicator. <laughs> right. And yeah, he showed true. it, right? He tried, and that, that phrase was actually the tail end of what started out to be a really legitimate apology. Right. For things, he acknowledged the the, the responsibility. Um, he he was asking for forgiveness at the end, and he started down a path, and then knew that he'd started down the path and wanted to end it and get out. And so, the first thing off the top of his head was, uh, you know, everybody wants everybody wants this thing to end, especially me. I want my life back, <laughs> and it was all over but the shouting. That's right. You know, it, if you say a hundred words, ninety-nine of them can be right, but there's one there's word that, one could, word. that could make it incorrect. Yep, that's exactly right. And you right. could spend fifty years crafting a brand, right? And five seconds can can kill it if you do things wrong. That's why communication is so important. Absolutely, absolutely, and why I think this topic is so important right. too, because we've gotten into this apology culture. I agree. So let's let's give some takeaways for the audience today. First, tell the name of the book and the author. Let's make sure yeah. that if they're interested in this book, that they can uh, pick it up themselves, find it online, etc., and dive deeper into. Uh, how to properly and improperly, because you can learn from that, yeah, do, exactly. do apologies. Exactly. Well, the book is called The Apology Impulse. The author is Sean O'Meara and Gary Cooper. Okay. And um, the, it overwrote my notes. Um, <laughs> the, but uh, essentially, the, the, the six elements of an apology, regret, sure. explanation, mm-hmm. acknowledgement of responsibility, repentance, offer of repair, and request for forgiveness. 
So those are the six elements of what is a valid apology in the author's mind, right. and I agree. And something else, we, we, so we, we hit on cancel culture. We also hit on corporate culture and the fact that a, a, that a spin or a crafted apology, if you will, typically the issue or the problem or where the public becomes unhappy is because it is points to deeper problems in a corporate culture that – and, right. and, and insincerity and, and the apology because they have, aren't really fixing things. So they're Absolutely. all covered in those six. Absolutely. And, and then the finally, other... the last piece, of course, is you can do five of them well, but if you do the sixth one wrong <laughs> right. or if you skip one or you only right. do three, et cetera, right. then there's no point at all because you're going to ruin all that good right, work. Right, right, right. There is, there is tremendous demand for accountability. There is the organization's propensity to apologize with a non-apology, and that means everybody right. gets shortchanged. So we're going to be working on that. Well, there it is, folks, and that is a good follow-up to the episode we had last time about communication planning is this is all part of the process. You, can only, you, you have right. to do what you can do. Don't overthink it. Don't underthink it. And be prepared, going back to the idea of, of, of – public uh, interaction within an hour when there's controversy, et cetera. Yep. Um, it comes from a timetable and a good communication plan, crisis ma- management, all of that, um, having your protocols in place, et cetera. Protocol, so there goes back. The links to those episodes will be in the description below for sure. Perfect. So take us out. Perfect. Until then, ciao. Good luck.